Question 1. What is the definition of a foodborne illness? A. An illness caused by spoilage of perishable items. B. A disease transmitted to people by food. C. A reaction to additives used in food production. D. Discomfort from eating too much food. Answer. B. A disease transmitted to people by food. Foodborne illness is caused by consuming contaminated foods or beverages. Question 2. Name three common symptoms of foodborne illnesses. A. Nausea, headache, and dizziness. B. Fever, nausea, and diarrhea. C. Vomiting, blurred vision, and sneezing. D. Diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. Answer. D. Diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. These are typical symptoms that indicate a foodborne illness. Question 3. What are the four key steps to food safety? A. Clean, separate, cook, chill. B. Wash, dry, prepare, store. C. Selection, preparation, cooking, storage. D. Inspection, washing, cooking, serving. Answer. A. Clean, separate, cook, chill. These steps help prevent foodborne illness by managing how food is handled. Question 4. How should you wash your hands properly in a food handling environment? A. With cold water and soap for at least 10 seconds. B. With warm water and soap for at least 20 seconds. C. With any temperature water and soap for at least 5 seconds. D with hot water only for at least 15 seconds. Answer, B, with warm water and soap for at least 20 seconds. Proper hand washing requires warm water and soap to effectively remove germs. Question five. What temperatures are considered the danger zone for foodborne bacteria growth? A. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 68 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius to 20 degree Celsius. B. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. C. 50 degree Fahrenheit to 150 degree Fahrenheit, 10 degree Celsius to 65 degree Celsius. D. 55 degree Fahrenheit to 125 degree Fahrenheit, 13 degree Celsius to 52 degree Celsius. Answer. B. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. This temperature range is critical because it allows rapid growth of bacteria. Question 6. Explain the importance of time and temperature control in food safety. A. Prevents spoilage and maintains food quality. B. Prevents foodborne illness by controlling bacterial growth. C. Keeps food at a palatable temperature. D. All of the above. Answer. B. Prevents foodborne illness by controlling bacterial growth. Keeping food out of the danger zone is key to safety. Question 7. How should raw meat be stored in a refrigerator in relation to other foods? A. Above all cooked and ready to eat foods. B. Below all cooked and ready to eat foods. C. Beside dairy products only. D. Anywhere as long as it is in a sealed container.
Answer. B. Below all cooked and ready to eat foods. This prevents raw meat juices from contaminating other foods. Question 8. What is cross contamination and how can it be prevented? A. Mixing cooked and raw foods in the same container. B. The transfer of bacteria from one surface or food to another. C. Using the same cutting board for all types of food. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Cross-contamination involves the transfer of harmful agents to food from other foods or surfaces. Question 9. Describe the proper method to thaw frozen food safely. A. At room temperature on the counter. B. Under cold running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. C. In warm water to speed up the process. D. On the top shelf of the refrigerator only. Answer. B. Under cold running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. These methods prevent the growth of harmful bacteria. Question 10. Why is it important to use a food thermometer? A. To measure the room temperature. B. To ensure food is cooked to a safe internal temperature. C. To check the refrigerator temperature. D. To make sure food is served hot. Answer. B. To ensure food is cooked to a safe internal temperature. This prevents foodborne illnesses by ensuring harmful bacteria are killed. Question 11. What are the minimum internal cooking temperatures for poultry? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. D, 175 degree Fahrenheit, 80 degree Celsius. Answer, C, 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Poultry must be cooked to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit to safely kill harmful bacteria. Question 12. What are the minimum internal cooking temperatures for beef? A. 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius. B. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. C. 155 degree Fahrenheit. 68 degrees Celsius. D. 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius. Answer. B. 145 degree Fahrenheit. 63 degrees Celsius. Cooking beef to at least 145 degree Fahrenheit ensures it is safe to eat. Question 13. How often should food contact surfaces be cleaned and sanitized? A. After each use. B. Once a day. C. Every four hours during continual use. D. Both A. And C. Answer, D, both A and C. Surfaces should be cleaned and sanitized after each use and every four hours during ongoing tasks to prevent contamination. Question 14. What are the signs of pest infestation in a food service area? A, unusual odors. B, droppings or nesting materials. C, both A and B. D, sudden increase in spoiled food.
Answer, C, both A and B. Signs include droppings, nesting materials, and unusual odors, indicating pests. Question 15, what should you do if you suspect a food product is contaminated? A, serve it only to staff. B, cook it thoroughly. C, discard it immediately. D, return it to the supplier without documenting it. Answer, C, discard it immediately. Contaminated food poses a health risk and must be disposed of safely. Question 16, how long can food safely stay in the temperature danger zone before it becomes unsafe? A, one hour, B, two hours, C, four hours, D, six hours. Answer, B, two hours. Food should not be left in the danger zone for more than two hours to prevent bacterial growth. Question 17, name two types of bacteria that commonly cause foodborne illnesses. A, E. coli and salmonella. B, lactobacillus and saccharomyces. C, candida and aspergillus. D, none of the above. Answer. A. E. coli and salmonella. These bacteria are common pathogens that cause foodborne illnesses. Question 18. How can you tell if food is spoiled? A. Change in color, smell, or texture. B. It has been in the refrigerator for more than a week. C. The expiration date has passed. D. All of the above. Answer. A. Change in color, smell, or texture. These are reliable indicators of spoilage. Question 19. What is the procedure for using and storing chemical sanitizers? A. Follow manufacturer's instructions and store away from food. B. Use any sanitizer available as long as it is diluted. C. Store in any convenient location. D. Use full strength for maximum effectiveness. Answer. A. Follow manufacturer's instructions and store away from food. Proper use and storage are crucial for safety. Question 20. Why is personal hygiene important in food safety? A. It prevents the spread of foodborne pathogens. B. It helps maintain a professional appearance. C. It reduces the need for frequent hand washing. D. It makes food preparation easier. Answer. A. It prevents the spread of foodborne pathogens. Good hygiene is essential to prevent contamination of food. Question 21. How should gloves be used in a food service operation? A. Reused for different tasks to save on costs. B. Changed between tasks and when torn or soiled. C. Used only for handling money. D. Worn at all times, even when handling different foods. Answer. B. Changed between tasks and when torn or soiled. Gloves should be changed to prevent cross-contamination. Question 22. What should be done with leftover food that has been sitting out for more than four hours? A. Refrigerated immediately and used within 24 hours. B. Discarded as it is no longer safe to eat. C. Reheated to 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. D, served immediately to reduce waste.
Answer. B. Discarded as it is no longer safe to eat. Food left out for more than four hours may be unsafe due to bacterial growth. Question 23. What steps should be taken if a food handler is ill? A. The food handler should continue working, but avoid handling food. B. The food handler should report their illness and stay home. C. The food handler should work only with packaged foods. D. The food handler should take medicine before coming to work. Answer. B. The food handler should report their illness and stay home. This prevents the spread of illness through food. Question 24. What is AKCCP and how does it relate to food safety? A. A cooking technique that ensures food is cooked evenly. B. A certification required by food handlers. C. A management system focused on food safety through hazard analysis. D. A type of food safety equipment. Answer. C. A management system focused on food safety through hazard analysis. HACCP identifies critical control points where hazards can occur. Question 25. What information must be included on a food label in a commercial kitchen? A. Price, ingredients, and nutritional facts. B. Name of the food, prep date, and use by date. C. Color additives and food origin. D. Cooking instructions and chef's name. Answer. B. Name of the food, prep date, and use by date. This information helps manage inventory and ensure food safety. Question 26. What are the proper procedures for washing dishes in a three-compartment sink? A. Rinse, wash, sanitize. B. Wash, rinse, sanitize. C. Sanitize, wash, rinse. D. Wash, sanitize, dry. Answer. B. Wash, rinse, sanitize. This sequence ensures that dishes are clean and free from harmful bacteria. Question 27. How should you handle a food recall? A. Ignore it unless customers complain. B. Remove the affected product from inventory and follow the manufacturer's instructions. C. Sell the product at a discount. D. Use the product quickly to minimize loss. Answer. B. Remove the affected product from inventory and follow the manufacturer's instructions. This prevents potential health risks. Question 28. Describe how to cool food safely. A. Leave at room temperature until cool then refrigerate. B. Cool rapidly in the refrigerator. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. D. Cover tightly and place in the freezer. Answer. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. Rapid cooling techniques prevent bacterial growth. Question 29. What are the food safety risks associated with ready-to-eat foods? A. They require extensive cooking before serving. B. They can be contaminated after cooking. C. They are safer than raw foods. D. They require no temperature control. Answer. B. They can be contaminated after cooking. Ready-to-eat foods must be handled carefully to avoid post-cooking contamination. Question 30. 
How can allergen cross-contact be prevented in a food service operation? A. Cook all foods to high temperatures. B. Use separate equipment and utensils for allergenic foods. C. Only serve allergen-free foods. D. Label foods containing allergens after cooking. Answer. B. Use separate equipment and utensils for allergenic foods. This prevents allergen cross-contact and protects guests with allergies. Question 31. Why is it important to maintain food at safe temperatures during transport? A. To enhance the flavor of the food. B. To increase the shelf life of food. C. To prevent foodborne illness by controlling bacterial growth. D. To comply with food presentation standards. Answer. C. To prevent foodborne illness by controlling bacterial growth, maintaining safe temperatures ensures that food remains safe during transport. Question 32. What is the best way to handle a customer's food allergy concern in a restaurant? A. Ignore the concern as most people exaggerate allergies. B. Recommend only raw foods. C. Communicate the concern to the entire staff and ensure the food is prepared safely. D. Serve them a limited menu to avoid complications. Answer. C. Communicate the concern to the entire staff and ensure the food is prepared safely. This approach helps prevent allergic reactions. Question 33. How often should temperature logs be checked and recorded in a commercial kitchen? A. Once a week. B. Daily. C. At the beginning and end of each shift. T. Monthly. Answer. C. At the beginning and end of each shift. Regular checks ensure that equipment is functioning properly and storing food safely. Question 34. What is the proper procedure for refilling a hand-washing sink with soap? A. Refill only when completely empty. B. Use any type of soap available. C. Ensure the dispenser is cleaned and then refilled with an appropriate hand soap. D. Refill with dishwashing liquid to save on costs. Answer. C. Ensure the dispenser is cleaned and then refilled with an appropriate hand soap. Proper maintenance of hygiene facilities supports effective hand washing. Question 35. What types of foods are most susceptible to foodborne pathogens? A. Dry foods like flour and sugar. B. Acidic foods like citrus fruits. C. High protein foods like meat and dairy products. D. Frozen foods. Answer. C. High-protein foods like meat and dairy products. These foods provide a good environment for bacterial growth if improperly handled. Question 36. How can the risk of salmonella contamination be reduced in a kitchen? A. By cooking poultry and eggs thoroughly. B. By avoiding the use of plastic cutting boards. C. By storing food at room temperature. D. By using only canned vegetables. Answer. A. By cooking poultry and eggs thoroughly. Proper cooking kills salmonella that may be present in these foods. Question 37. What is the role of the food manager in ensuring food safety? A. To cook food at high temperatures only. B. To oversee the overall food safety practices in the operation. 
C, to serve food to customers. D, to clean the kitchen equipment. Answer, B, to oversee the overall food safety practices in the operation. The food manager ensures that all safety protocols are followed. Question 38. How should a food safety training session be conducted for new employees? A. Briefly on the first day of work. B. As a quick review once a year. C. Through detailed sessions covering all necessary food safety practices. D. Only online without practical demonstrations. Answer, C, through detailed sessions covering all necessary food safety practices, comprehensive training ensures employees are well prepared to handle food safely. Question 39, what actions should be taken following a foodborne illness outbreak in a restaurant? A, close the restaurant temporarily, investigate the source, and correct the issue. B, offer discounts to affected customers. C, ignore the complaints unless more arise. D. Increase advertising to counteract bad publicity. Answer. A. Close the restaurant temporarily, investigate the source, and correct the issue. Prompt action helps prevent further illness and addresses safety concerns. Question 40. How should fruits and vegetables be cleaned before preparation? A. With a mild soap and water. B. Rinsed under running water and brushed if necessary. C. Soaked in hot water. D. Peeled only, no need for washing. Answer. B. Rinsed under running water and brushed if necessary. This method effectively removes dirt and microbes. Question 41. What is MIFO and how does it relate to food safety? A. First in, first out. It ensures the oldest stock is used first. B. Final inspection, first out. It prioritizes inspected foods. C. First in, first out. It pertains only to non-perishable goods. D. First input, first output, it is a method of employee scheduling. Answer. A. First in, first out, it ensures the oldest stock is used first. This method helps prevent food spoilage and waste by using older inventory before newer. Question 42. What are common critical control points in a kitchen? A. Areas where food is served. B. Locations where food safety training occurs. C. Points in the cooking process where hazards can be prevented. D. Only points where food is stored. Answer. C. Points in the cooking process where hazards can be prevented. Identifying and managing these points is crucial for preventing foodborne illness. Question 43. How should ice be handled safely in a food service environment? A. Treated as a food item with dedicated scoops and containers. B. Handled with bare hands for ease. C. Stored near the kitchen to maintain temperature. D scooped with any glassware for convenience. Answer. A. Treated as a food item with dedicated scoops and containers. Ice should be handled with care to prevent contamination. Question 44. What are the guidelines for serving food to high-risk populations, such as the elderly or immunocompromised? A. Serve food at room temperature. B. 
Ensure food is thoroughly cooked and avoid high-risk items like raw eggs. C. Provide smaller portions. D. Focus only on flavor enhancement. Answer. B. Ensure food is thoroughly cooked and avoid high-risk items like raw eggs. Proper food handling is critical to protect vulnerable populations. Question 45. How should you store dry and canned goods in a commercial kitchen? A. In refrigerated units. B. On the floor to save space. C. On shelving off the floor and away from walls. D. In any available space, regardless of temperature and moisture. Answer. C. On shelving off the floor and away from walls. Proper storage prevents contamination and maintains food quality. Question 46. Describe the safe procedure for handling and preparing eggs in a restaurant. A. Keep eggs at room temperature to enhance flavor. B. Use eggs promptly after purchase and store them in the refrigerator. C. Cook eggs only lightly to preserve nutrients. D. Serve raw eggs to customers who request them. Answer. B. Use eggs promptly after purchase and store them in the refrigerator. This minimizes the risk of salmonella contamination. Question 47. What are the guidelines for using cutting boards safely? A. Use the same cutting board for meat, vegetables, and dairy products. B. Use separate cutting boards for raw meats and other foods. C. Clean cutting boards monthly. D. Replace cutting boards annually. Answer. B. Use separate cutting boards for raw meats and other foods. This prevents cross-contamination between different food types. Question 48. How can food handlers prevent food contamination during service? A. By wearing gloves at all times. B. By avoiding hand contact with ready-to-eat foods. C. By handling food as little as possible. D. Both B. And C. Answer, D, both B, and C. Minimizing hand contact and handling can significantly reduce the risk of contamination. Question 49. What are the consequences of not following food safety regulations? A, improved kitchen efficiency. B, possible legal action, fines, or business closure. C, more flexible work hours. D, increased customer satisfaction. Answer. B. Possible legal action, fines, or business closure. Non-compliance can lead to severe consequences, including health risks to consumers. Question 50. How should leftovers be reheated to ensure safety? A. Quickly in the microwave to save time. B. To a temperature of at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. C. In an oven set below 150 degree Fahrenheit, 65 degree Celsius, to retain moisture. D. At room temperature. Answer. B. To a temperature of at least 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius. Reheating to this temperature ensures that any potential pathogens are killed. Question 51. How long can cooked food be safely stored in the refrigerator? A. Up to one week. B. Three to four days. C. 
10 days, D, 2 weeks. Answer. B, 3 to 4 days. This is the recommended time frame to ensure that the food remains safe to eat. Question 52. What should be done with grease and oil to prevent sanitation issues? A. Pour down the sink to dispose of quickly. B. Recycled or disposed of in a dedicated grease bin. C. Mixed with general waste. D. Stored in the refrigerator. Answer. B. Recycled or disposed of in a dedicated grease bin. Proper disposal prevents plumbing issues and environmental harm. Question 53. How often should a food service worker receive food safety training updates? A. Only during their initial orientation. B. Once every 10 years. C. Annually. D. Every 5 years. Answer. C. Annually, regular updates ensure that staff remain knowledgeable about current safety standards and practices. Question 54. What is the proper procedure for disposing of expired or spoiled food? A. Reuse it in different dishes. B. Dispose of it in a secure garbage container. C. Domain it to food banks. D. Use it for staff meals. Answer. B. Dispose of it in a secure garbage container. This prevents the potential spread of foodborne illness. Question 55. How can visual inspections contribute to food safety? A. By ensuring that the food looks appealing. B. By detecting early signs of spoilage or contamination. C. By evaluating the skills of the food handlers. D. By reducing the workload on managers. Answer. B. By detecting early signs of spoilage or contamination. Visual inspections are crucial for identifying unsafe food before it reaches consumers. Question 56. What are some common food safety mistakes made in fast food operations? A. Excessive cleaning of cooking equipment. B. Frequent hand washing. C. Inadequate cooking and holding temperatures. D. Overstaffing during peak hours. Answer. C. Inadequate cooking and holding temperatures. Proper temperature control is essential to prevent foodborne illness. Question 57. How should you handle customer complaints regarding food safety? A. Ignore them as most are unsubstantiated. B. Listen actively, investigate the issue, and take appropriate action. C. Offer a refund without any further action. D. Blame the customer to avoid liability. Answer. B. Listen actively, investigate the issue, and take appropriate action. This approach helps maintain trust and safety. Question 58. What are the risks associated with undercooked seafood? A. It can taste better than fully cooked seafood. B. There is no risk if the seafood is fresh. C. It may contain harmful viruses and bacteria. D. It will usually cause no harm if served immediately. Answer. C. It may contain harmful viruses and bacteria. Consuming undercooked seafood can lead to serious health risks. Question 59. 
How should you manage food safety during a power outage? A. Continue to operate as usual. B. Use dry ice to keep food cold. C. Monitor the temperature closely and discard any food that enters the danger zone. D. Close the establishment immediately without taking any other actions. Answer. C. Monitor the temperature closely and discard any food that enters the danger zone. This minimizes the risk of serving unsafe food. Question 60. What safety measures should be in place when using a microwave in a commercial kitchen? A. Use it to cook all types of food thoroughly. B. Only use plastic containers for heating. C. Ensure the microwave is clean and that food is covered when heating to prevent uneven heating. D. Use it for storing non-perishable items. Answer. C. Ensure the microwave is clean and that food is covered when heating to prevent uneven heating. This promotes safe and effective use. Question 61. What are the guidelines for the proper use of aprons and hairnets in a kitchen? A. Aprons and hairnets should be worn at all times in the kitchen. B. Hairnets are optional, but aprons must be worn by grill staff only. C. Aprons should be worn during cooking and removed when cleaning. D. Aprons and hairnets are only necessary during health inspections. Answer. A. Aprons and hairnets should be worn at all times in the kitchen. This practice helps prevent contamination of food. Question 62. How should sharp objects like knives be stored to ensure safety? A. In a drawer with other utensils. B. Loosely on kitchen counters. C. In a designated knife rack or holder. D. Hung on hooks above the food prep area. Answer. C. In a designated knife rack or holder. Proper storage prevents accidents and maintains kitchen safety. Question 63. What is the proper procedure for cleaning up broken glass in a food service area? A. Sweep it up with your hands. B. Use a broom and dustpan, then vacuum the area. C. Leave it until the end of the shift to avoid disruptions. D. Ignore it if it's in a non-food prep area. Answer. B. Use a broom and dustpan, then vacuum the area. This ensures all small pieces are removed and reduces the risk of injury. Question 64. What factors should be considered when designing a kitchen to enhance food safety? A. Aesthetic appeal and the cost of materials. B. Ease of cleaning, workflow efficiency, and contamination prevention. C. Location of the building and local cuisine trends. D. The preferences of the head chef. Answer. B. Ease of cleaning, workflow efficiency, and contamination prevention. These factors help ensure a safe and functional food preparation environment. Question 65. What should be done to maintain the safety of food served on buffets? A. Serve food at the correct temperatures and use sneeze guards. B. Offer a variety of raw and cooked items together. C. Keep foods uncovered for easy access. D. Reduce the number of food items to decrease risk. Answer. A. Serve food at the correct temperatures and use sneeze guards. This minimizes the risk of contamination and maintains food safety. 
Question 66. What precautions should be taken when handling spicy or acidic foods? A. Wear gloves to protect skin and prevent cross-contamination. B. Taste these foods frequently during cooking. C. Store at higher temperatures than other foods. D. Serve these foods without any accompaniments. Answer. A. Wear gloves to protect skin and prevent cross-contamination. This protects the handler and maintains food safety. Question 67. How should a food handler deal with cuts or wounds on their hands? A. Cover the wound with a bandage and continue working. B. Leave the wound open to air out and heal quicker. C. Cover the wound with a waterproof bandage and wear gloves. D. Stop working until the wound has fully healed. Answer C. Cover the wound with a waterproof bandage and wear gloves. This prevents contamination and allows safe food handling. Question 68. What are the legal consequences for a food establishment that causes a foodborne illness? A. A certificate of excellence from the health department. B. Possible fines, legal action, and closure. C. Mandatory participation in cooking competitions. D. Increased publicity and customer interest. Answer. B. Possible fines, legal action, and closure. These consequences address the serious nature of causing a foodborne illness. Question 69. How should temperature-controlled delivery vehicles be maintained? A. Regular cleaning and temperature checks before loading. B. Use them interchangeably with non-temperature controlled vehicles. C. Only clean them when visible dirt is present. D. Temperature checks once a month. Answer. A. Regular cleaning and temperature checks before loading. This ensures that food is transported safely. Question 70. What are the benefits of using digital food safety management systems? A. They provide entertainment for staff. B. They reduce the need for staff training. C. They improve record keeping and compliance monitoring. D. They completely eliminate the need for manual checks. Answer. C. They improve record keeping and compliance monitoring. Digital systems enhance accuracy and efficiency in managing food safety. Question 71. What is the proper procedure for sanitizing a meat slicer? A. Clean and sanitize only when visibly dirty. B. Wipe down with a damp cloth daily. C. Disassemble, clean, and sanitize after each use. D. Sanitize with hot water at the end of the day. Answer. C. Disassemble, clean, and sanitize after each use. This prevents bacterial growth and cross-contamination. Question 72. How should food handlers deal with language barriers in a diverse kitchen? A. Use only one language to simplify communication. B. Provide training and safety information in multiple languages. C. Expect staff to learn the dominant language on their own. D. Use nonverbal cues only to communicate important safety information. Answer. B. Provide training and safety information in multiple languages. This ensures all staff understand safety procedures. 
Question 73. What are the best practices for food waste management in a restaurant? A. Burn all waste at the end of each day. B. Send all waste to landfills. C. Recycle and compost appropriate waste. D. Store waste in the kitchen until it is full. Answer. C. Recycle and compost appropriate waste. This approach is environmentally friendly and can reduce disposal costs. Question 74. What should be included in an emergency response plan for a food service operation? A. Procedures for dealing with fires, power outages, and foodborne illness outbreaks. B. Specials and promotions to increase customer traffic. C. A list of all employees' birthdays. D. Decoration themes for holiday seasons. Answer. A. Procedures for dealing with fires, power outages, and foodborne illness outbreaks. This ensures readiness for various emergencies. Question 75. How should live seafood be stored and handled in a restaurant? A. In a dry, warm environment. B. At room temperature with adequate water. C. In properly aerated tanks at specific temperatures. D. Cooked immediately upon delivery. Answer. C. In properly aerated tanks at specific temperatures, proper conditions ensure the seafood remains fresh and safe. Question 76. What are the guidelines for using food additives and preservatives safely? A. Use as much as desired to enhance flavors. B. Follow legal regulations and manufacturer instructions. C. Only use natural additives. D. Avoid them entirely to promote organic foods. Answer. B. Follow legal regulations and manufacturer instructions. This ensures safe and effective use of additives and preservatives. Question 77. How should a food handler address food safety concerns raised during health inspection? A. Dispute all claims made by the inspector. B. Correct identified issues and follow up on recommendations. C. Offer the inspector a free meal to avoid penalties. D. Ignore minor concerns and focus only on major ones. Answer. B. Correct identified issues and follow up on recommendations. This demonstrates commitment to maintaining high standards of food safety. Question 78. What are the guidelines for serving food outdoors or in temporary settings? A. Follow the same food safety protocols as indoor settings. B. Relax safety standards since the setting is temporary. C. Use disposable utensils only. D. Focus on cold dishes to avoid safety issues. Answer. A. Follow the same food safety protocols as indoor settings. Consistent safety practices are essential regardless of location. Question 79. How should a restaurant prepare for a natural disaster in terms of food safety? A. Ignore it, as natural disasters are rare. B. Prepare an emergency kit, secure food stocks, and create a plan for food safety. C. Plan to sell food quickly before the disaster. D. Close the restaurant permanently as a precaution. Answer. B. Prepare an emergency kit, secure food stocks, and create a plan for food safety. Being prepared minimizes risk and potential loss. 
Question 80. What training should be provided for handling food during catering events? A. Basic table setting skills. B. Comprehensive food safety, transportation, and setup protocols. C. Only culinary skills to enhance food presentation. D. Minimal training as catering is less formal. Answer. B. Comprehensive food safety, transportation, and set of protocols. Proper training ensures food is handled safely in off-site events. Question 81. How can a restaurant ensure the safety of food served from a mobile kitchen? A. By reducing the menu to cold dishes only. B. By following the same food safety standards as a permanent kitchen. C. By serving food as quickly as possible. D by using disposable dishes and utensils only. Answer. B. By following the same food safety standards as a permanent kitchen. Mobile kitchens must adhere to stringent food safety practices to ensure health and safety. Question 82. What should be considered when setting up a kitchen for a food service startup? A. The trendiness of the decor. B. Location relative to suppliers. C. Efficient layout and design for safety and functionality. D. Only the cost of equipment. Answer. C. Efficient layout and design for safety and functionality. Proper setup is crucial for operational efficiency and ensuring food safety. Question 83. How should a restaurant handle vegetarian and vegan food differently regarding food safety? A. Cook vegetarian and vegan foods at lower temperatures. B. Use separate prep areas to avoid cross-contamination. C. Store all vegetarian and vegan foods at room temperature. D. No special handling is necessary. Answer. B. Use separate prep areas to avoid cross-contamination. This is crucial to accommodate dietary needs and prevent allergen cross-contact. Question 84. What are the safety considerations for using sous vide cooking methods? A. Sous vide foods can be cooked directly from the freezer. B. Foods must reach a specific temperature for a precise time to ensure safety. C. Sous vide is safer with no risks compared to traditional cooking methods. D. Temperature monitoring is not necessary. Answer, B. Foods must reach a specific temperature for a precise time to ensure safety. Precise temperature control is essential in sous vide to avoid undercooking. Question 85. How should allergen information be displayed on Menace? A. In a separate menu available upon request. B. Clearly next to each item that contains common allergens. C. Only inside the restaurant, not online. D. By verbal communication only. Answer. B. Clearly next to each item that contains common allergens. This transparency helps customers make safe food choices. Question 86. What are the signs that a refrigeration unit is not maintaining safe temperatures? A. Food items feel slightly warm. B. Condensation inside the unit. C. The temperature gauge occasionally fluctuates. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. 
These signs indicate potential failures in maintaining required cold temperatures. Question 87. How can food handlers improve their awareness of food safety practices? A. By attending annual training sessions. B. Regular updates and continuous education on food safety. C. Observing colleagues only. D. Focusing on speed rather than safety. Answer B. Regular updates and continuous education on food safety. Ongoing education ensures handlers are up to date with the latest safety practices. Question 88. What should be the approach to cleaning and sanitizing in an organic food restaurant? A. Use only water for cleaning to keep foods organic. B. Use standard chemical sanitizers approved for organic use. C. No sanitizing is needed for organic food. D. Clean less frequently. Answer. B. Use standard chemical sanitizers approved for organic use. Even organic restaurants must adhere to strict sanitizing practices to ensure safety. Question 89. How should a food handler manage stress in a busy kitchen to maintain food safety? A. Take shortcuts to finish tasks faster. B. Maintain calm and adhere to all food safety protocols. C. Ignore minor safety violations. D. Work faster without breaks. Answer. B. Maintain calm and adhere to all food safety protocols. Managing stress effectively ensures safety procedures are not overlooked. Question 90. What are the consequences of improper food labeling in a commercial kitchen? A. Increased efficiency in the kitchen. B. Risk of allergic reactions and potential legal issues. C. Easier inventory management. D. Reduced costs. Answer. B. Risk of allergic reactions and potential legal issues. Accurate labeling is crucial for customer safety and compliance with regulations. Question 91. How can technology be used to track food temperature throughout the day? A. Install advanced refrigeration systems with built-in thermometers. B. Use a manual checklist only. C. Check temperatures only at the start and end of the day. D. Use guesswork based on experience. Answer. A. Install advanced refrigeration systems with built-in thermometers. These systems provide continuous monitoring and ensure safe food storage temperatures. Question 92. What are the challenges of maintaining food safety in a high-volume restaurant? A. Keeping up with the fast pace while adhering to safety standards. B. Having too many staff members to manage. C. Food safety is easier with more customers. D. Customers are less attentive to food safety. Answer A. Keeping up with the fast pace while adhering to safety standards. High volume can pressure staff, but safety must remain a priority. Question 93. How should a food handler use feedback from customers to improve food safety practices? A. Dismiss it unless it comes from a food safety inspector. B. Take it seriously and adjust practices as necessary. C. Consider customer feedback only if it is positive. D. Use feedback for marketing purposes only. Answer. B. 
take it seriously and adjust practices as necessary. Customer feedback can provide valuable insights into potential safety improvements. Question 94. What are the guidelines for cooking food using open flame in a restaurant? A. Ensure proper ventilation and fire safety measures are in place. B. Use open flames only for special occasions. C. Cook at lower temperatures to save fuel. D. Focus on the visual aspect only. Answer. A. Ensure proper ventilation and fire safety measures are in place. This is essential to prevent accidents and ensure a safe cooking environment. Question 95. How should a food service operation manage seasonal menu changes to maintain food safety? A. Train staff on new menu items and associated safety practices. B. Change the menu as often as possible. C. Do not introduce new items to avoid risks. D. Limit menu changes to winter only. Answer. A. Train staff on new menu items and associated safety practices. Proper training ensures that safety is maintained despite menu changes. Question 96. What should be done to ensure the safety of food samples given to customers? A. Handle them with bare hands for ease. B. Follow the same safety protocols as for regular meals. C. Offer samples without any temperature control. D. Provide samples only on request. Answer. B. Follow the same safety protocols as for regular meals. Sample foods must be handled with the same care as all other food items. Question 97. How can a restaurant assure customers about the safety of their food during health scare? A. Provide detailed information about safety measures and enhancements. B. Offer discounts to distract from the health scare. C. Temporarily close the restaurant. D. Reduce menu options to lower risks. Answer. A. Provide detailed information about safety measures and enhancements. Transparency helps build trust and reassures customers about safety practices. Question 98. What steps should be taken to sanitize a kitchen after handling raw seafood? A. Clean with water only to preserve flavors. B. Use designated sanitizers and thoroughly clean all surfaces and equipment. C. Focus on areas that appear dirty. D. Sanitize only once a week. Answer. B. Use designated sanitizers and thoroughly clean all surfaces and equipment. Proper sanitation prevents cross-contamination. Question 99. How should food safety be managed in a restaurant with multiple cuisine types? A. Follow the same procedures for all types of cuisine. B. Customize safety procedures for each type of cuisine based on specific needs. C. Focus only on the cuisine that requires the least effort. D. Use only one set of cooking equipment for all cuisines. Answer. B. Customize safety procedures for each type of cuisine based on specific needs. Different cuisines may have unique safety requirements. Question 100. What training resources are most effective for teaching food safety in a multicultural kitchen environment? A. Resources available in multiple languages and formats. B. Use only text-based resources for simplicity. C. Offer training in the dominant language only. D. Limit resources to video content.
Answer, A. Resources available in multiple languages and formats. This ensures all staff understand and can apply food safety practices effectively.